Every day, driving down the road, you'll come across trucking companies with colorful graphics or interesting designs. But do you ever wonder what goes into the process and how it can impact a fleet's bottom line? Well, folks, today's your lucky day because we're going to find out in this episode of Loaded and Rolled. Welcome to Loaded and Rolling, folks. I'm your host, Thomas Wasson. Now, the graphic images on your fleet of vehicles are likely seen by more people every day than any other marketing method your company utilizes. The appearance of your fleet and the branding elements displayed on your vehicles as they move through metro areas, over interstate highways, and through inner city streets are impossible to ignore, thus creating an impact on public perception of your company and influencing purchasing behaviors. Now, as the owner of your fleet's brand image, you need partners to help you avoid pitfalls and simplify what can be a complex process. Success for any journey requires careful planning and a map to give you clear directions, in addition to partnerships with experts that have made the trek before. Today's podcast will provide you with a proven guide for your fleet branding program in six basic steps. Joining me to talk about fleet branding and designing graphics are Darren Keller, Vice President of Account Strategy with Lowen Color Graphics, and Mark Bagley with 3M Commercial Solutions Group. Between these gentlemen, Darren has nearly 30 years of experience in graphic sales at Lowen Color Graphics, and Mark Bagley has nearly five years of experience at 3M, where he focuses on marketing strategies for fleet solutions. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Excited to have you on the show. Let's let's dive right in here. For for folks who are in, this is the first time I've heard about fleet graphics as well before getting to talk in person. Um, what are we when we're looking about visuals for trucking? Uh, you know, companies and such. What are some of the the considerations that if I have a new fleet and I need to start thinking of how they're going to look, what do I need to take into consideration? We'll start with Mr. Keller. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's a metamorphosis. Um, where we're transforming with graphics a truck uh, into a branding force on wheels. It's, it's a mobile billboard, uh, you know, turning a standard trailer into a FedEx-specific trailer or a Pepsi-specific trailer or a standard delivery truck into a Kroger delivery truck seen by all. And, uh, you know, according to studies by uh, multiple groups, but specifically American Trucking Associations and uh, the uh, American or the uh, Outdoor Advertising Association of America have done studies throughout the, the course of time to indicate that a single truck generates over 16 million visual impressions per year, and 98% of drivers stated they noticed the branding on trucks. Uh, so dollar for dollar, vehicle graphics are by far the most affordable ad spend out there. And uh, on the design side of it, which is really the first step in the process, uh, you, you need to start working with your marketing team and define objectives. Uh, consider the, the fleet scale as well as the coverage of the, of the graphics on the vehicle to aid in developing a budget. Um, utilize the brand elements from other branding campaigns, you know, uh, logos, slogans, striping, Colors, products, services, pictorials of, of uh, products and so forth. And then align yourself with specialists. And, and these are people that are not just great designers, but they're great designers of vehicle graphics specifically, uh, that, who will walk with you through the process in an interactive format. Uh, for instance, we have a product called Low and Sign Off that directly connects our, our customers with the designer who created their artwork. Uh, and then f really the final part of the, uh, the design phase really would be to consider a prototype to see the, the final graphic actually on a vehicle. Uh, and Lowen and 3M have partnered over the course of time to offer discounts for prototypes to help our customers out. I had a follow-up question on design and color. I know that some folks say the color of your branding is supposed to like elicit certain things like maybe blue is trust or orange or browns. For existing customers or new one, is it more important about getting the color right or just figuring out like what kind of brand and style do you want in the first place? 
Yeah, I think that really goes back to the the meeting with your marketing folks. They're, they're the experts with um, understanding color and, and other elements that will uh, make your fleet stand out on the on the roadways. And um, so, you know, and, and then beyond that, it's really, you know, the elements that you want to utilize and how well they're positioned on the surface and in the space that is allotted. And, and not only to make it look fantastic, but also to design it in a way that uh, best utilizes materials. And so it results in a lower material waste and uh, the best price possible. And this is what, we'll hit to the second point, selecting a film. I used to think that you just painted them over, but it turns out that film and wrapping is the way to go. Uh, you know, we'll, Mr. Bagley here, we'll toss it over to you. When we're thinking about like film and the right graphics, are we thinking of like an, a giant sheet of film that you wrap around the trailer or is there something that goes into the manufacture of this compared to just like me getting like a bucket of paint and just slapping it on there? Yeah, no, great question. There's a variety of different ways that you can kind of tackle that question, right? And I think first and foremost, Darren already spoke to it, it's super important to be working with that consultant and that specialist that not only understands what the film is, right, but how it's intended to be used um, and the nuances of how it interacts with like a vehicle, for example. So I would say first and foremost, always reach out to a 3M or a low end rep who can help sort of bridge that gap between really what you've visioned in your head and what film is available to then accomplish that goal. Then there's really kind, kind of, of three. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was kind of curious as well, like looking at the film, the wraps and the cost, if I'm looking to say I want to get the entire thing wrapped or small portions, am I going to have to deal with like cost parameters or is it like cheaper to just film the entire thing versus filming smaller parts? Yeah, so there's there's a obviously a variety of different solutions, everything from cut vehicle lettering. So, you know, depending on what your marketing budget allows for, um, the, the lowest cost of entry would be something as simple as cut lettering, which would be you know, um, basically copy that's cut out of a solid sheet of film. Um, you think of like a phone number on the side of the vehicle or your website, maybe just the name of the company itself, um, all the way to a full reflective wrap, for example. So not only is the coverage an option and a consideration for cost, but so is the type of film you're using. But that film and the variety of different films out there all obviously have different utility. So that first kind of um, note in the decision tree, if you will, is Think of why you're wrapping your fleet in the first place. For the most people, you know, most part, people are going to answer that they wrap their vehicles to be seen and to really drive those brand impressions. But then ask yourself, you know, how are these vehicles utilized to do just that? So some fleets, they're operating from, say, 2 in the morning to 10 a.m., or maybe they're operating sort of like after hours, you know, 5 p.m. onward. If you're operating at night like that, only about 5% of what's actually visible during the day is truly visible at night. So what good is wrapping your vehicle if nobody can see it in the first place? In that case, you might want to consider using something like a reflective film. Um, additionally, you know, on top of the brand impressions, the average headlight for you know, the standard sedan only illuminates about 200 to 250 feet in front of you. And there's a physics problem here. If you're moving at 60 miles an hour, it takes about 300 feet to come to a complete stop. So what that means is by the time you've actually seen it, you, you don't have enough time to come to a complete stop and get out of the way. Therefore, the large vehicles, when you think of like the 53-foot semi-trailers, those are struck in the rear three times more often than any other type of vehicle. So, yeah, we want our brand to be seen, and that's the primary objective. But if you think about the utility of how your vehicles are being used, you might want to also consider things like your driver's safety and also just keeping your vehicles out of accidents so that they stay on the road making you more money. I hadn't thought about that before. I remember getting a 3M reflective belt when I was in the military, and it saved me from getting hit yeah. by two cars. So that was nice. But I didn't think about it. you could use, if you're operating at night as a fleet and you run mostly night things, you could use the film and branding to make it reflective and have reflective areas to show drivers, hey, please don't run me over. So you can have both, right? I could have letters of like Wasson trucking in a reflective film and then make sure that it can also help reduce risks of getting rear-ended. Right. And whether it's reflective film or it's opaque film, the next kind of decision that needs to be made is, well, what type of reflective film or what type of opaque film am I going to go for? A digitally printable option or more of a pigmented film? Um, and kind of back to your question on the colors and, um, you know, is, is color more important than, than the imagery, for example? Both are equally important considerations, especially if you're going the digital print route and you operate a fleet that's, say, national or even global in scope. Working with a partner like Lowen that's got the scale to produce your graphics for a global fleet or even a national fleet 
um, that gives you the ability to really disguise the limit, right? You can print gradations, patterns, complex designs, any image you can think of could be digitally printed on a film. Similarly, if, you, if you've got a standard brand color, um, you can work with a partner like Lowen to make sure that you've got greater consistency for your brand so that no matter where those graphics are shipped, if you're using a pigmented film, which is basically think of like a dyed piece of film, it, it comes out of the box, that standardized color, that's going to allow you to have that consistency. And ultimately, people consider um, and, and relate to colors more so than copy and icons, right? So um, if you think of Tiffany Blue or Coca-Cola Red, right? So using pigmented film can be a great way to achieve that consistency for your brand image. And I think that's pretty cool. It rounds us to the next question, trying to figure out the right partner. Uh, so let's say I figured out my brand. I know what my coloring is going to be. I know if I need a little copy on my trailer. Uh, trying to get the next step, what are some things I need to be thinking about and considering when, like, trying to figure out a company I can help me out? Uh, we'll go with uh, sure, Mr. Keller. We can start with that, and then we'll kick it over yeah. to Mr. Bagley. You bet. Sounds good. You know, uh, obviously equipment, uh, capability, capacity, uh, production requirements. If they're 3M certified, those are, those are all factors. Uh, proven experience and reputation for quality and standing behind their work, uh, backed by comprehensive manufacturer's warranty. Uh, so back to the 3M certification and that process where 3M technicians literally come into our, uh, our facility and uh, audit us to make sure that we're in compliance with their specifications to honor their 3M matched component system warranty, which is a comprehensive warranty. Um, you know, look for companies that specialize in fleet branding and have that, uh, that experience and, and installation management as well. Uh, look beyond just the production capabilities into, you know, their service offerings like design and, and if they if they offer inventory and fulfillment for that inventory and uh, installation is another uh, key component to a graphics manufacturer if they have the ability to, to manage an installation project and understand the installation process. Um, and then ease of, of going into the, the systems that they offer. Uh, how easy do they make it to do business with them? Um, Go for a single source, a company that offers the full service, uh, turnkey, you know, truly a partner and an extension of your operation. Uh, look at their portfolio and understand the scope of their projects and um, have they successfully managed, um, uh, you know, some large projects with big fleets and, um, you know, very reputable brands. Um, Ask about the OEMs and, and dealers and upfitters and fleet management companies that they've worked with in the past. And uh, ultimately, ask about the capabilities uh, with providing customer portals uh, back to the ease of doing business. Do they provide a dashboard uh, with data integration and electronic ordering um, and electronic approval of artwork? Um, you know, that, that makes it very simple. Um, we do have a portal. Ours is called the Agile Customer Portal. We have over 13,000 users today. It's a cloud-based tool that automates the fleet graphics management process for our customers. And uh, they use it multiple times, multiple times a day, every single day. And uh, finally, I think the, the ultimate test uh, for selecting a graphics supplier is to take the time to go see their operation. I know not, 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 not everyone can afford to do that every single time, but if, if you can, it's just such a huge difference maker to, to literally see for yourself what their operation consists of, what their quality control is like, and to meet their people. Yeah, Mr. Bagley, I'm curious as well on that. We were talking about like when you're looking for, but how are these things made? Are we talking about overseas and giant roles? Like I know uh, from my experience with certain customers like, flooring comes in through ports or you produce them domestically locally and then you just take them to location what's the process and behind the scenes on how uh, this film's created yeah great question so one of the benefits of working 3m is that um, all of our films are made all of our vehicle films are made um, locally here in the united states so all the raw materials are sourced globally but manufactured locally we've got very very tight control over our quality process um, and part of what Darren had spoke to was the MCS uh, certification that MCS stands for matched component system essentially it's 3M's version of ISO 9000 so 
even though we don't manufacture the printers that the film goes through or the ink that goes on the printers, we do have contractual obligations and great working relationships with those manufacturers as well. So part of manufacturing our film is also manufacturing in a way that we know is going to be supported by the platforms that are producing these graphics. And so that's what the MCS is all about, is full integration through the entire manufacturing process to make sure that it's that the you know the fleet manager is ultimately receiving the utmost quality uh, product. And so, you know, it's something where Darren mentioned 3M technical team is heavily involved and does annual audits with the Lowen team. Um, again, only certain printers qualify. So you have to have the right kind of equipment. And even if you have that equipment, it's more important that you're utilizing it the right way. So by Lowen being a, a, a select MCS partner, what that's basically certifying is that they use the best equipment in the industry, they know how to maintain it, and they know how to, how to use it properly to ensure that graphics are being produced to the utmost quality. That's ultimately going to last and keep your vehicle on the road that much longer, making you more money. How big are these printers, by the way? We're talking like it takes an entire, like a garage size, or I'm always curious when you're producing the graphics, if it's something that requires a very large facility. Whoever wants to jump in. Yeah, it does. Uh, so, yeah, imagine your uh, desktop HP or Epson printer, or, you know, sitting on your desk, um, you know, supersized, obviously. Um, ours can hold um, uh, side by side 260 inch rolls of material. So that's at least 120 inches. I'm going to say the footprint of those presses uh, is probably closer to 150 inches uh, in width. And uh, it is a roll process uh, whereby we, um, we, we utilize rolls uh, that will go from the, the, the actual presses, uh, then uh, on the roll, stays on the roll, goes all the way through the process until it goes to the dock, uh, which is an efficiency gain that, that we offer. Um, we, we've modified our presses uh, considerably with our own engineers and with 3M uh, involvement as well as the actual press uh, manufacturers. And um, so, yeah, it, it's quite a process. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they, they're, they are large. Um, and uh, yeah, you have to have a pretty good sized facility and a pretty good sized and knowledgeable workforce to keep these things running 24 seven. That's fascinating stuff, especially like trying to figure out once it's printed. So we're, we're printing it, pro, you know, you get in it printed out, but how do you install this thing? Do you, is it like heat or pressure sensitive? I just kind of slap it on and put a, uh, an adhesive or we'll start with uh, Mr. Bagley here. Like what's the process that goes into actually the installation on uh, the vehicles? Sure. So it all begins with the surface prep itself, right? Whether you're wrapping an, ex an existing trailer that has graphics on it, those graphics have to come off. The vehicle has to be you know, prepped so that it has proper levels of adhesion. Um, but once you've properly prepped the vehicle, it's more important to have a clean workspace so that as you're pulling the liner off, for example, to begin adhering the graphic to the side of the vehicle or the trailer, um, that nothing can kind of get up and underneath it in between the adhesive and, and the substrate you're trying to install it onto. But 3M really pioneered what we call pressure activated adhesives, meaning that you can take it off the liner and it's going to feel kind of sticky to the touch, but it actually has little glass microscopic hosts that separate that adhesive from the substrate just enough that you can slide it around um, and it doesn't activate until you apply pressure with either your hand or with a squeegee. So um, the nice thing about that, it enables Lowen's installers to get your graphics centered more easily, get them ultimately installed faster, and again, get your fleet back on the road, making you more money. So it's molecular. That's cool. So molecular based the pressure of it and adjust it to where it'll stay on and then uh, removal as well. So let's say I want to take it off and I decide that red's not my color. I really want it to be like yellow. Um, you know, looking into that, uh, we'll ask uh, Mr. Keller here. What do you do when you want to uh, um, remove this stuff? Or let's say I buy a new truck that is previously wrapped. What are some of the processes for pulling it off? Well, the first step is to use the right material to begin with. And, and that's why we, you know, we would always start with a premium 3M cast vinyl, uh, not to get too techy here in the terminology. Uh, and then that vinyl is designed to remove, and uh, the adhesive in that vinyl is design, designed to remove with heat. Uh, and then, you know, and a professional installer typically would be uh, dispatched to go on location to remove that vinyl. 
Um, and uh, it can be painstaking, but uh, if, if you know what you're doing, uh, then you can get it off in, in nice big pieces uh, rather than little tiny microscopic pieces, which a lesser vinyl um, would probably do. Um, you know, so you know, time is money and, uh, we want to start with the premium product up front rather than, uh, skipping that step, going with a, a lower quality or lower cost film and creating more costs in the end. Yeah. And if I can the, add to that. Yeah. Too. I was just trying to oh, imagine sorry. trying to pick it off. And then if it's lower quality, it'll literally just break apart. I'm assuming. And then you're just stuck there trying to. Right. That's what yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, sorry. It was, yeah, uh, whoever wants to hop no, in on no. that. That's what I was curious about. How hard it is to like if you got a poor quality one, are you just stuck there with a chisel trying to get it off? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or if you use the wrong type of adhesive, right? If you try to throw a permanent adhesive on there, um, it's you know it's the nature of the name, permanent. It's not intended to come off. So making sure that you specify a removable film um, for your vehicle wraps is important. And you know just as important as identifying your brands by wrapping your vehicles. De-identification is also an important consideration, which makes removal so important. Um, you know, have you ever seen a brown box truck driving around that's not labeled with UPS? Right? The answer is probably no, because they actually first paint them white. They use a very small fraction of them internally, but ultimately all of those those box trucks get ground into a pulp, right? And there's a reason for that. It's to protect their brand identity. So whether you buy or you lease your fleet vehicles, you have to think about what is it, what happens to that vehicle at the end of its service life. Do you turn it back in um, or do you try to sell it you know, on the secondary market? Whatever that option is, one, you're always going to be charged for that removal one way or the other. right? It's always factored into that, that cost of resell or the cost of turning it back in. Um, but more importantly, you know, if you can get that branding off, you're now protecting your brand so that it doesn't end up in somebody's hands that you know, ultimately doesn't represent your company and maybe does something nefarious with it that puts you in a kind of a, a dicey situation, right? But more importantly, it also increases your residual value. You know, just like how there's not as many people out there looking for a neon yellow van um, or a bright red box truck, the market opportunity for a white van or a white box truck is much higher. So not only are you gonna protect your brand by specifying a removable film, but you're also gonna increase your residual value on the back end and recoup a little bit more of that initial investment. I'll follow up with Mark. Is that a big reason why if I see on the side of the road, literally vehicles with some other company and they didn't decide where they wanted it permanent or temporary, and then you just see the outlines of their stuff on it and it looks really weird? It definitely can be. Yeah. And it can also be from, you know, improper maintenance um, or maybe even just leaving them on far, far too long. Right. And follow up here because we're about a little under three minutes left now. Technology and trends in addition to maintenance. Um, you know, looking at graphics and wrapping, uh, I was fascinated by the, the molecular uh, work and the chemical work done. Is there anything that folks who are looking into getting this done, what should we know about moving forward or any cool things coming across the horizon? And we'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Keller. Sure. Um, you know, first of all, back to the maintenance and, uh, you know, the pH of pH level of the wash solutions, just to touch on that very briefly because I know we're running out of time here, but just remember 311. That's the range. That's the sweet spot for the pH balance in, in the uh, wash chemical or wash, wash solutions to keep the graphics pristine. Uh, and then there's, you know, maintenance instructions that uh, 3M has done a great job with uh, providing to, to customers. Um, and then moving into, you know, trends, uh, new technology, um, yeah, one of the things that we're currently working on is to provide training and installation for paint protection film as well as, well as window film. Um, that is slated to be online in June, and then we'll start offering those two uh, options to our fleet customers as well as the graphics. So, you know, just for us to become even more of a partner uh, for those two products. Um, and then some of the trends that we're seeing is with dedicating uh, a few trailers to maybe honor veterans or first responders uh, or veteran employees um, and promoting for driver recruitment. Um, and uh, what we have for driver recruitment also, in addition to the actual graphic, is to put a QR code on that uh, graphic to make that an interactive process. And the best part of that is that Lowen offers a downloadable QR code for free. That's pretty cool. I didn't think about and doing I, the QR codes. Mark, uh, 
Yeah, let me uh, leave a quick. Yeah, what we'll do is uh, we can continue on with the interview, of course. Uh, since we do have 60 seconds, what we'll do is uh, let's get the where to reach you all both. And then for the podcast, we can continue past it because they'll, they'll cut me off, unfortunately, otherwise. So we'll continue on. For folks wanting to find out more about Lowen, uh, Darren, what's the best way to find out? 30 seconds. Uh, website is www.lowencg.com. Uh, telephone number is 800-835-2365. And uh, I can be reached at Darren K, D-A-R-R-E-N-K, at lowen.com. Perfect. And Mark, we'll keep going after the timer, but 13-ish seconds, 3M, just reach out at 3M.com or anything particular? Yeah, 3M.com backslash fleet. Uh, the, you can learn all about all the different considerations that we talked about today. But more importantly, you can fill out just a quick contact form to, to get in touch with a local 3M rep today that, you know, eats, sleeps stickers and can be that consultant for you for whatever you need for your fleet. Um, and you can also reach out directly to me at mbagley, B-A-G-L-E-Y, at mmm.com. Perfect. Well, uh, that'll be the ending of the live portion. We'll keep this conversation going, though. Of course, we're still going to be recording it. Uh, for those of you who want to join us, we'll probably throw the outro thing out real fast, and we'll keep this going on the podcast. So um, if you want to stand by and watch more of this, you can join us on tv.fairwaves.com when we get it put up. Uh, gentlemen, I wanted to get into this QR code thing real quick because this is super fascinating. If I'm doing a recruiting, uh, actually shifting gears, I worked at U.S. Express, and they did a graphic wrap on the uh, veterans' trucks. Is that something where it takes an entire wrap and a specific one to wrap the entire vehicle, or do you just do those things in pieces? What goes into that? And we'll start with Mark. Yeah, so if you're if you're looking at doing an entire wrap, there's, you know, again, working with a specialist is going to be important because you have to overlap and things like that. So they have to account for that sort of bleed. But yeah, I mean, if you're doing a full trailer wrap, it starts at the back, work their way to the front, overlapping panels, um, they're, they'll hit their registration so that the graphic looks seamless. Now from you know, 5, 10, even 15 feet away, you're not even going to see those individual panels until you get right up on it. Um, the nice thing about that is, again, you have that kind of that seamless transition. It looks like one consistent image printed along the side of your trailer. And then for the QR codes as well, that's what I'm also curious about. Is it specifically you'd put them on the fronts and the sides, or uh, would you uh, decide to, is there a specific better spot when you're trying to get drivers and stuff to check it out? And either one, I'm, I'm, whoever uh, knows more about it. Yeah, it, it's it's basically just to, to place it in a you know conspicuous place, and uh, it could be down by the phone number or website. Um, but what's cool about it is then you just you know use your phone like you would any other QR code on a restaurant menu, and uh, what it would do is lead you to a form, and then you could very quickly uh, fill out the form, submit the form. And now you have pretty much instantaneous interactivity with your potential new employer. Final yeah. question here while well, I got you guys still on. Uh, I know that uh, whenever in the airtime in the studio, it's always like, they're going to shoo you off a little bit. But final questions for both of you, one of each. We'll start with uh, Mark. Most interesting or complicated rap or the coolest one you all have done? Um, we'll go with Mark. Yeah. So um, we've seen some pretty, pretty creative stuff, you know looking at mixing different types of film together. So if you think of a color change base where it's a pigmented film where you change the car, color of a car from you know, white to red, for example, um, and then do some printed elements on top of that, and better yet, if they're printed in reflective, then you get that pop at night, um, and you can do some pretty creative stuff with that. The other thing I've seen that's really interesting is what we call ghost reflective, where um, like, let's say you take a, a black car and you put black pigmented reflective on it, during the day, you really can't read it. It blends right in with the black paint. But at night, that black reflective actually illuminates white. And so then you see that that high contrast of the white reflective against the black paint. And it kind of gives you this inconspicuous during the day, but very conspicuous appearance at night. Darren, coolest thing you all have gotten to wrap so far, most complicated. Yeah, most complicated really goes back to that uh, veteran uh, tractor that you're talking about for U.S. Express. Uh, those are very complicated. That requires a super high skill set with the installer. It actually requires a special film configuration to make sure you're using the right laminates and adhesive because that film has to stretch and conform to the, to the curvatures in that uh, tractor on, on that surface. Um, but beyond that, you know, we've wrapped combines and tractors and... Uh, uh, 
equipment that serves all kinds of different beverages and, and kiosks. And basically, if, uh, if it has a, a surface and it's visible to the public, then we can put a wrap on it. Fascinating stuff. I'll, I'm going to get famous one day. We're going to do a loaded and rolling wrap, but uh, it may be taking a minute. Let's we'll do figure it. figure it out eventually. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate y'all staying a little bit longer with me as well. I know that being 26 minutes sometimes can feel a little constrained when we're talking about complicated topics, but uh, thanks again so much uh, for coming on the show. Looking forward to uh, maybe one day coming and visit a facility. I'd love to see how it's made. We can bring a camera, show the world. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we'd love that, Thomas. Thanks so much for hosting us today. Thank you all so much. Uh, those of you just catching up, that, of course, was uh, with our gentleman here, Mr. Darren Keller, Vice President of Account Strategy with Lone Color Graphics, and Mr. Mark Bagley with 3M Commercial Solutions Group. You can definitely check them out, 3M and Lowen. Really cool stuff. I had no idea that the UPS trucks do that kind of blew my mind. Uh, but that's going to be it for this episode of Loaded and Rolling. Uh, those of you catching us on the podcast, uh, this one's a little bit longer than usual, but we do have that option now as long as I figure out how to correctly transfer it from the live show when we cut it off. So otherwise, you can check out the newsletter as well, released every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, or you can just find this episode, if you don't like podcasts, at tv.freightwave.com slash loaded and rolling. That's going to be a wrap for today. Folks, I'm Thomas Watson, your friendly neighborhood trucking expert, Keep it classy. Join us next week. We'll do it live.